Welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast with author Sarah F. Hathaway and co-host Chen Gibson. Blending survival fiction and fact to bring you entertaining education that will help you dream, survive, and thrive. And now, here's your host, Sarah F. Hathaway and Chen Gibson. Hello, and welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast. Hey, Chen, what's up? Oh, I am. Chin's up. Chin's up. Yeah, we finally got the, I finally got the intro down better again, you know, after five years of podcasting. Uh, <laughs> I just went over to Twitch to listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to get, I've been trying to get more and more listeners over there, get talking. And we love to have you guys uh, over on Twitch. So you guys got to get over there and join us on Twitch. And don't forget to get over to my website, become a member. Great stuff. I got the, um, the binge episode for uh, 7 to 12 done. It's not posted yet, but it is done. So that's, mm. that'll be fun. Nice. That will be fun. So, yeah. So today, uh, I gave Chin a huge list of uh, all the current threats that we have facing us because we were trying to think of ideas and uh, we got it narrowed down a little bit. This is, this is your mind on TNT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, that's enough for like 12 years. <laughs> so I uh, I think they're doing that to us on purpose. You know, yep. I think that's the, um, they're just kind of making our brains all scrambled up because I had a hard time. The jabs from all sides. Yeah, Exactly. I had a hard time, like, even getting back into listening to any of it after the election. And I'm sorry, I could be just uh, totally naive or whatever, but I just think it was a whole fraudulent process. And now the corruption has just taken over. And I was just like, I withdraw from caring for a little bit because um, I had to guard my psyche a little. It was yeah. rough. Well, that's important. Yeah. Yeah. So now that I'm trying to re-educate myself on everything that's going on right now, I'm just like, oh, paralysis analysis, analysis paralysis. <laughs> she she sent like four like, pages of show <laughs> prep notes. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. Like, let's just give them a whole list of everything that you guys should be worried about, and then you'll be <laughs> just as scramble cake as we are. <laughs> I, I started grabbing my blankie and my thumb in my mouth. <laughs> I'm drooling a bit. Can't, can't do it. Can't go on. Yeah. So I've been, uh, I'm going back. We, like I was saying before the show, we did a big hike this weekend, trying to just get back Excellent. out in nature, um, enjoy it. And, um, you know, Brock even had a, had a good time usually it's something i have to force him to do with me yeah. and he was like let's go and do it and he really wanted to get out there and he had a really good time as well it was really nice to just uh decompress so stay true to like the, the simple things absolutely i know i i need to head to the mountains every once in a while get away from the concrete too much concrete's not good for the soul no it's definitely not. none of this that's going on right now is good for the soul um this this is it's just artificial everything feels so fake right now uh, mm -hmm. i don't know so that's why i'm like okay we just gotta i stick. can't even read dr seuss anymore yeah right we gotta just my green eggs and ham to our basics <laughs> and not go off the cliff with everybody else like even though they're like hey come fall off the cliff with us come fall off the cliff no you have to I just like throw mr potato, potato or potato head i don't know if it's mr or mrs yeah, whatever watch out potato head had to go in the trash all my dr seuss library had to go in the trash uh, yeah no not happening. <laughs> not happening i was like oh what is the message too real for you is that what happened um did you read the lorax is that did, did that it just got too real for you so i don't know man it's uh it's trying like i say you just can't go off the cliff with everybody you know it's like everything that we knew as a fact 
we were now being told no. <laughs> no, that's not. It's not. Bad. It's not boy and girl, and that everything we you know. It's just like ah, they're blowing us away. Yeah, everything. Um, and it, uh, it's in Revelations. Everything the time when you know, um, everything will be upside down, inside out, and. So that's why I say we just can't go off the I was actually having this conversation with my mom. I was like, you know, I'm going to be like the new wave, like w- Amish person, <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> be like the person oh, who like, that be awesome. yeah, you still like use technology and stuff, but it doesn't rule you. And like you don't uh, become genetically modified and you, and you don't become like a bio human and <laughs> things like that. I'm like, mm, I'm good. Yep. Yeah. So uh, got the garden. Uh, we got our seeds planted. That's always fun to do with, uh, you know, with Christian. He's nine. And uh, it's it's good stuff. Um, we had a cool starter tray. They were like these little peat discs. And when you add water to them, they grow. Like, remember the animals we used to have? Like, when you add yeah, water the to them, right? things or whatever. Yeah. yeah. They grew into, like, these little dirt towers. And then you plant in there and put the little house, the little top on it. And so I'll keep you up to speed on how that's working for germination. Because usually I just do like a paper plate with paper towel, you know. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So we're we trying saved, this out. Uh, we, we saved, saved uh, uh, toilet, toilet paper, paper rolls. rolls. Cut them in half. Uh, stuff them with. with there dirt. you go. Uh huh. And then we could just plant the whole thing. Uh huh. That's smart. That was my idea last. Year. Everybody was talking about toilet paper last year, so I was trying to, you know, do more with less. And, Figure out how I could reuse the toilet paper roll. Oh, listen to you, Charmin Ultra. Less huh? You like that? Yeah. <laughs> Charmin Ultra. <laughs> no, that's a stellar idea, though. I didn't think about yeah, that. Right? One. I've seen like the use your egg cartons um, yep. to plan yep. like that. And I don't know. I, I, we used, it's like we not used plastic, plastic cartons last year because the egg cartons are plastic. plastic. Oh, uh-huh. And they were, that was a pain in the butt because yeah, I had to, to scoop it out. out. Uh-huh. Yeah. So then we, we had a toilet paper roll, and I'm like, hmm, if I cut this in half, that'll give me two. That's and a, uh, that's obviously we use plenty of toilet paper through the year, so I was right. good. Well, that's why I was talking to Brock. I'm like, well, what do we do? How do you make pe- How do we make these ourselves then in the future? Yep. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't so know. I like that. But, yeah. I mean, if you didn't have the toilet paper roll, I mean, you're in the same yeah, boat. We just don't throw it out. We've you... tried, like, Tupperware. Like starting yeah. small, but it, again, it's hard to get it out. How of to there. get it out? Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. these egg cartons are like perfect, right? Mm-hmm. And then you put the little dome over top, and it kind of made a little greenhouse thing, right? And I thought it was perfect until I had to get the little seed, the little out. pot, and, and I was it. like, "This is pain." Yeah, exactly. That that's just horrible. I mean, I guess you could just like take a exact. No, and still though, like the dirt falls apart. Now your seed's yep. all vulnerable. Yeah. Yep. And all that work you just did. Yeah. So, so yeah. I was just you know, this is this is our new experiment. Okay, gonna now you're gonna have to let me know how that goes because I'm now I'm interested. That's yep. that sounds pretty cool. <coughs> Toilet paper rolls, cut it in half, pack it with yep. dirt, put your seed in there, yep. and do the little dome idea. You know, you just have to yep. cover it with plastic basically. Yep. So like it, I like it. Good thinking. Yep. Yeah. So I'm excited because gardening season is always fun. It gets you outside. and Yeah. And the fruit trees are coming along. So we're going to have lots of fruit. Um, our bushes, like our landscape, didn't really do well with snow. <laughs> Go figure in Texas. <laughs> so some of those bushes are coming out. And um, I'm thinking I'll just plant blueberry bushes and then herbs and stuff in the front flower bed and, and yeah. uh, go with that because... Play blackberries so you get all those thorns in front of your windows. Yeah, we're going to do um, artichokes. So they're kind of mm-hmm. a stout tree, I know. But I, I we had a lot of blackberries in Cali. Um, yeah. Um, and you can, like, trellis them even to, like, be the a certain design. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I had a bunch in my dog kennel, so I made my dogs, like, tunnels they could run through from the blackberries. <laughs> And they loved it because that, that's when I had chows and it would like yeah. brush their hair for them too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was cool. <laughs> they loved it. So, 
yeah, so the gardens will will be uh, uh, keep an eye on that. Or you're doing your container gardening again? Yeah. yeah. Good. How did that work out last year? Would you get like enough the like can uh, or something like that? Or no, did... we um uh, lettuce did well. Uh, of course. Our first, first this, this year, year, so the year before last, tomatoes did okay, did okay. But this year, the tomatoes didn't do. They grew huge, but they didn't give us much. And, huh. I mean, we got like barely any fruit. So I don't know if we're doing. That's I think strange. she's just gonna buy some tomato plants already established. Yeah, sometimes that is easier. I, I'm um, trying again to do my own. Wait, like radishes. Yep. And the same thing, we had squash and cucumber that grew huge, but we didn't get a lot of fruit. So I don't know. Or veg, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) I've never done a lot of container gardening because we always had space, you know. So I'm always curious about what's really successful there. Yeah. And the, the, the direction of our porch is we get north and northwest sun, so it's not really the best. Hmm. So yeah, I so I think that most of those, like the squash and the cucumbers, need more sun. And uh, maybe more pollination too. Oh, uh, my wife was all about the berry white with those plants. She had a little paintbrush and she was getting all sexy with them. Uh oh. Yeah, <laughs> I was getting jealous. Yeah, the cucumbers. It's really important. Yeah. For them oh, she would go out there and. Got you. Hmm. Yeah, I just know that because from mine, um, when I've had bad years, it's because yeah, yeah, we didn't have as much pollination as we should have. And on a melon, like the the actual lines on it, when you see like lines on a watermelon, those yeah. are actually from the pollination process. They're actually good things. So uh-huh. everybody tries to look for that perfect melon when it might not be the perfect melon. Might so, not. Yeah. Well, the we aired episode eight of the Changing Earth podcast, this, or of the Changing Earth audio drama this week, and um, so many people have been like, "Thank you for the distraction," you know, just like yeah. to have a distraction of just a fun show that's going on, something to just you know, kind of check out of that space. So that was pr- that's pretty cool. Um, yep, yeah. good I, show. It's fun. fun. Yeah, somebody as a writer, that's like one of my favorite things to hear when, you know, um, you're providing that entertainment for people and uh, because that's kind of what it's all about, you know, otherwise why share my stories? I'd create them anyway, but, you know, otherwise I wouldn't share them. (laughs) I mean, I... I Otherwise it'd just be voices voices in your head. Yeah, I mean, I would still write it anyway that, that I... I write because I'm a writer, you know. I mean, I still, like, I've always made. You so need that out. T-shirt. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like a big pen on it, like big fat. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll try and keep it a little bit focused because my logic man was like, "Whoa, <laughs> we have to stay focused." So I'm gonna try. TMI. Oh, TMI. Yeah. I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> I'm gonna give it the old college go. Um, what are the big, uh, topics in this chapter is, uh, butchery of animals, which is a really important thing. So I'm, I'm, we're over at my website. If you guys are watching the video or are you joining us live on Twitch, which you should be, we'd love to have you there, but I have an article, um, in food and nutrition in the survival guide and, um, Let's see. It's survival butchery. And this was only the 15th episode I ever recorded. Look at you. I know. But this is one I go back to in my head all the time because I grew up, um, you know, uh, butchering deer, going hunting, things like yep. that. So um, I definitely did a lot of that. And this one's the lost art. I know. I know. I, I still love it. Actually, we buy I'd rather buy bulk meat. And then yep. I break it down myself. It's just so yep. much uh, less expensive. But even Brock's like, oh, you got to break the meat down. You just do it way better. You know, <laughs> I like working with the knife like that. <laughs> I know, a little weird. 
So um, I had Jim Kozlowskis on the show, and he works in Florida um, doing, like, he uh, pens wild boars to keep them under control and, yeah. like, boas, things like that. He does animal removal, but it's, like, pretty large scale because they have some serious problems down there. Yeah. Some of the things he talked about during that interview as far as when you are gutting the animal, what to look for in the guts to make sure that's a healthy animal, I never really thought about that too much in the past. Um, yeah. We never saw anything, like, weird um, besides, like, uh, you're allowed to take doe in Michigan, and uh, my neighbor shot one that was, you know... Uh, <laughs> It was still a little close to when it had its um, offspring. So mm -hmm. it still had like some milk and stuff going on in there. And I was like, really, Dave, do we have to take this one? You know, but uh, regardless, that was the only time that I was like, wow, this is different. Or like a lung shot. You'll have like bubbly blood in there. Yeah. So that's the only time I saw something funky. So it never really hit my radar. But in a survival <laughs> situation, that's like really important to make sure that um everything you looks don't good. Get sick yeah. exactly also it's my belief that if you're going to kill an animal that you should be using every single every single part of it so um it's good to know what to do with everything personally i don't like eating organs but many yeah. other people do, so that's something that i usually give away or like oh my know, dad loved love that stuff. stuff oh yeah my mom oh Golly, I just and like my neighbor used to do pickled heart and um, eating all that stuff. See, I personally, I like the kidneys and the livers. Those are like those are waste cleaners. I know, right? Right. So I don't really want to eat those because that's all I can think about is like I. I, I just ordered, ordered a book. I was listening to James over uh, the his I Am Liberty podcast. podcast. Yeah, and it was, it was all about like. like he talked about uh, good prepper books that weren't prepper books. You know what I mean? Right. And one of them was the whole beast nose to tail eating. Uh -huh. And it was how to prepare like the entire animal. And I picked it up. I said, you know, this, this would be a good resource to add, not just your standard cookbook, right? Because like you were saying, the whole animal. And if, if you're hungry or if, if times are tight, I mean, that's, that's why they ate everything, everything right? right? Because you, you know, couldn't they, afford not to. Yeah, yeah. And, and if they, they were lucky enough to get an animal on a hunt, then they wanted everything out of it to stretch, stretch it the most they could. could. Right. So, yeah, yeah so, so I picked, I picked up, up that. that, that I can't, can't. That's supposed to be in on Tuesday. Tuesday. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, no, that's it's good to know. And, like, how to make cordage from the tendons and all yeah. this stuff. I mean, it, it's Tan the hides. Um, and, yeah. yeah, I love tanning hides. So it's the brain like, tan. Oh, uh, well, I know that's you have I enough tried. brain to tan I, the hides. Um, always enough brain to yep. tan the hides. I have another article on that one, too. Um, James Hart and I yep. did a good show on that. Um, but it makes a buck skin, right? So when I was tanning, I used alum and that way it preserves it more because buck skin, you have to smoke it. And then if it gets wet, you have to smoke it again after that to like make sure you uh, re-cure it kind of thing. Um, so there is some downsides to, um, doing it naturally. Um, and alum is now, I mean, it's a plant that grows up in the mountains and stuff. I mean, it is a natural resource. Also, um, oak trees have tannins yeah. in them, right? And which are for tanning hides. And when I finally put that together, I was like, duh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> tannins, tanning hides. That's so what they used to do is like carve out a trunk and then you would use the water in there to actually tan your hides. And that puts a more of a permanent tan into it as well. Hmm. Yeah. So I used to pick up roadkill because I was like coming in late, leaving early in the morning. If it's a full yeah. moon, the raccoons are always getting hit by cars and full wow. moons. And then I would know that it was fresh. And so I would just pick up the ones that I saw there and then practice on those because, you know, you know, they're fresh. And I, I think it's sad when you see things. Make just, yourself a hat, Daniel Boone hat. I, I actually did. <laughs> yep. <I'm> gonna, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but I just think it's sad to see it wasted like that. Yeah. And like in Michigan, they would come and pick the animal up and they would use it for feed at the zoo. But oh, in, nice. yeah, but in California, they just like kick it off the side of the road and, and it rots there anyway. Yeah. And it's just wasted. Well, maybe the, uh, the wilderness there would consume it. I know we have a lot of like vultures and stuff around here. It's true. It's true. We did have so, a lot of coyotes, bobcats. Yeah, coyotes. Like yep, yep, those, those two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it did, but still mm. it was. Uh, <laughs> so, you had a great suggestion. So, you guys are like, oh my God, I don't want to go out and pick up roadkill and I don't like go out and hunt. Well, how am I going to learn this skill? So just knowing how basically how to break down a chicken is a great place to start. Yep. yep. You can buy a whole chicken in any grocery store. So um, I'm sure there's tons of videos out there on how to do this. Um, but, you know, you're basically just taking the legs off, taking the thighs off, taking the wings off, and then good luck getting the breasts out however you <laughs> find yeah, out how to do that. Way you do it, yeah. Yeah. But it gives you a feel for how to find a joint, how to, you know, cut like the joint between the thigh and the leg and mm -hmm. the wing. And don't use scissors. Do it with an actual knife. No. Yeah, I do yeah. it with a knife. Yeah. yeah. Some people just cut. Like my mom, she'll just cut it with scissors. Oh, no. She's been doing it for a long time. So. And then um, from there, fish is a little bit harder, but I liked that idea as well. Like yeah. move on to a fish. Um. Fish is challenging because you're going to learn the artwork of a knife. Yeah. If you want to, like, make it so it's boneless. And not have a lot of scrap for soup. <laughs> make yeah. broth. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of broth <laughs> material in that. <laughs> yeah, you're going to learn how to, like, delicately. Um, yeah. Do I'm much better with the chicken than I am with the fish. Yeah. I've I've even learned now how to, like, do the skinning and everything I can do. All yeah. That. Wow. Yeah, and that's. I watch it like when I go fishing, like if I ever go on those like charter boats, mm -hmm. those guys like fillet a fish. Oh, yeah. Flip it over and skin it, and it's like, holy smokes. Well, we were out ice fishing one time. We caught 91 bluegill. <laughs> so my neighbor was like, guess what? You're going to learn how to we're clean a fish good. today. <laughs> we're having fish fry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. It was like fish and chips, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, he, yeah, he was like, you're going to learn how to clean a fish today because there are so many fish we have to clean <laughs> that you can't just sit there and watch, you know. Awesome. Um, so that, yeah, he taught me, you know, how to gut a deer, how to clean fish, how to do all yeah. that stuff. So um, that was always a lot of fun. So, yeah, fish is the your next step kind of and then from there you know that's when you're gonna have to start actually like finding rabbits you can usually get whole yeah to learn how to break them down um they're usually gutted though yeah and then yeah most i mean fish maybe not gutted but most of the other stuff yeah is, fish fish will probably yeah. be gutted too i mean you can't leave the guts in yeah. there too long it'll take yeah. the meat so uh but you can catch a fish for you. Most people can. Oh, fish. and if you've never done like a whole chicken before, a lot of times they put the guts back <laughs> inside. inside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so make sure you take them out because it's disgusting. People cook that stuff. Yeah. Turkey. <laughs> well, well a, lot of, like, a lot of people forget about that. Uh, yeah. And then I found like when we do our ducks and stuff like that, man, doing all that plucking just sucks. Yeah. And I've read so many ways on like supposedly how to make it easier. And honestly, it just sucks. <laughs> it still sucks. You just get it. No matter what. Yeah. So usually, typically, I have just forget it, skin it. I just take yeah. the breasts and the legs and then yeah. the rest is, you know, just dog food. Yeah. Yeah. You can just do it. Now, survival situation, you're going to need to make use of every bit of that. So well, you got more time. Well, well, you might not have more time, but yeah, you're, you're not, not doing, doing all the other. Somebody's going to be plucking it because you need yeah. that. That and yeah. like for a duck too, if you don't, if you're not careful and you just skin it off, you might get rid of the fat on it too, and that's some of the mm. best stuff. Mm. So, um, I've cut the breasts out and like just. Um, pluck the breast of it and then I cut it out with the skin but then you don't have to like pluck the whole bird you know it's just plucking your mess yeah <laughs> it's long it's harder yeah. than you think because those things they just stay in there 
So. And I've tried like the hot water. Everybody has their own thing for how to make yeah. it easier. And um, I, I think it just still sucks. So, But the breasts are pretty us- usually pretty easy to pull. And if you're going to use like feathers and stuff for pillows or anything like that, that's the feathers you're going to use are those down ones on the yeah. inside on the breast. So, I mean, that's that's the majority of your good stuff right there. So um, and you can always, you know, you can raise. Your, I mean, we had just two ducks and they had eggs and we had 22 hatchlings. Wow. So, I mean, you can make ducks pretty quick if you want to practice round, you know. <laughs> well, you can't feed that many. Yeah. I mean, they grow up fast. So you, you can't feed that many. You, uh, it's just they're a mess. So, <laughs> like, you have to uh-huh. do something. So, yeah. we Everybody got a duck, like, for Christmas one year. <laughs> and it was great um, for, like, you know, I was doing a lot of survival instruction with a team then. And so a lot of them had never seen an animal, like, actually killed and processed and yeah. and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, you get bloody when you cut their little heads off. You got to hold that thing. <laughs> yeah, I told I have friends that have chickens. I told them to get with me next time because mm-hmm. I need to get more. Yeah. I mean, I've had all my chicken come from the grocery store. I haven't done that. So chickens aren't so bad because you can hang them upside down by their legs. And yeah. then like as the blood rushes to their heads, they just kind of pass out. And then you can just jab them and they bleed out. Yeah, the um, cone thing, right? You can use a cone thing, too. You slide them in that cone. Right, right. Yep. But with the ducks, I mean, they're like the Muscovies are almost like a goose. They're like a seriously big animal. Yeah. So, um, you know, we just stretched them on the chopping block, took their head off, and then you have to control the neck so it doesn't just bleed all over the place. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, my friend <laughs> is helping us. And uh, we went up into town, and we're in the store, like, all bloody, like, blood in the ear and uh, down the side. And he's like, oh, we need some garbage bags and bleach. Have you seen my mother-in-law? <laughs> and the guy's like, what? And he's like, oh, forget it. You won't see her. <laughs> I'm like, dude. Uh, <laughs> not a <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> There's like a SWAT team waiting in the parking lot. When you <laughs> right? Go. Yeah. He's former um, sheriff. So, yeah. He that's got, awesome. Yeah. Makes him <laughs> like, that's not cool. <laughs> but no, the, you know, I mean, that's how, that's the way of the world. Yep. And that's where all your meat comes from, whether you want to believe it's grown in a grocery store. Somebody's or not. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody along the way is processing it. Yep. So, um, might as well be you, especially if you're raising your own animals. So, um, so I know we have a lot on our plate, and I could give you guys like a, a ton for your brains to just explode on. But I was listening to Christian over at Ice Age Prepper, and he was raising an alarm because um, over in Europe, and he actually got confirmation on this one, they're euthanizing the like home homesteading chickens they're youth going around euthanizing everybody's chickens aka AKA killing killing. aka killing exactly (laughs) and their excuse is that you know the bird flu right Mm -hmm. is out of control so we have to kill everybody's chickens and Mm -hmm. when you control a food supply you control the people and so now they want everybody to register Mm -hmm. every type of animal over there and you will say, well, that'll never happen here. Well, come on. How much have we seen that we, oh, it'll never happen here, and it's coming home to roost? Ha <laughs> ha. No pun intended, right? So just eyes on that one. Um, you know, all these registries are just bad news. I don't care. People always have the best of intentions. Yeah. Um, you know, every movie, right, starts out that way. Oh, we have this great idea. And it's going to be used for the good of all humanity. And then, like, evil dude comes along and corrupts it all. And, I mean. Somebody's always working an angle. Exactly. So, I would just caution you guys, like, keep an eye on that. I know we have so much on our plate right now, but that is not something we need. 
Um, if we have to be able to have a fallback plan, we can't just be like, oh, yes, benevolent corporations and government. We trust you to control all of our food supply. I, I don't know. Thank, Thank you, you for, for that, that cockroach, cockroach burger. May I have another? Yeah. Cockroach milk. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Like, oh, ugh. who would even think of that? Like, Gives a whole new meaning to Captain Crunch. Oh, nasty, dude. <laughs> nasty. <laughs> yeah, so we have to keep an eye on these things. We have to, um, oh my gosh, another pun. Stay abreast of the situation. Because <laughs> um, we, we can't, private, if they are allowed to have control over everything that we have privately then if stuff goes down you can't find your local supplier anymore all of yeah, that they, is they restrict the chain so they have, they so, have so much control, control over the entire chain then just, just even even if you wanted, wanted to feed yourself there, there wouldn't be the resources, resources to do it exactly and that's what like so even if they works even if they were out for the good of all people and even if their intentions were good and this wasn't like a control thing, okay, so this is totally good. What if we have just natural disasters and this whole yep. system that they set up is now gone? What do we have to fall back on? Nothing. You know, if we go all GMO seeds that won't reproduce and they decide, oh, well, it's a swine flu, we're going to come around and kill all your pigs or all your chickens or all whatever, you know, There'll be nothing to fall back on. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's Head on over to the lab. Get yourself some lab-grown meat. Yeah, no, I'm good. Well, what, you know, the lab could lose power tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, we'll, we'll talk about it later. This, you know, what's come. The magnetic poles are still weakening. All of our magnetic shield is still going down. So... If nobody is really thinking about this, nobody's putting up the flag there. Nobody's warning people about it. And then, you know, everybody just kind of poo poos it. Oh, that's so 90s or whatever. It's not like a. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Back then, they were just discovering that it could happen. Now they have historical stuff to go, uh, we kind of know when it's going to happen. <laughs> so, yeah. Crazy stuff. So our supply chain, it's, uh -huh. it's big concern. Big concern. Um, whether we go, so <laughs> I'm like, I'm lost. There's so much stuff. Because China, to me, is still like a huge looming threat. And I, like uh -huh. this stuff with Taiwan, have you been watching what's going on there? I have not. Not Taiwan. Yeah. So, um they're trying to like extend their control over Taiwan, which they've had a lot of. Um, so it's kind of like um, a Korea kind of thing all, all yeah. over again, you know, um, where they're trying to keep it under communist control. And so they, the biggest export that Taiwan has to China is um, actually pineapple production. Huh. And so now they have like the freedom pineapple. They're trying to like, People, uh, America and Canada and Australia, we're buying them up like crazy because we're trying to, you know, keep their country supported and stuff as they democra democratize. Um, and that's in the midst of all of what's going on, you know, with with every the North China Sea standoff and all that yeah. stuff. Um, and then Biden and his whole. I don't trust. I don't know. I loved it when they shut the camera off on him. Oh, right. And I'll take questions. Boop. Click. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's such a charade, right? It's, it's, <sighs> yeah. So, I don't know. I think that China just sees us totally weakened. And, yep. And uh, without leadership now. And so that that really worries me, not only because of like an actual physical threat, but they have um, 
I can't remember what their book is called, but um, so many other ways that they're going to war with us. Well, they are. Yeah, absolutely. They come. They right. come out of cyber. They came mm-hmm. out of through the marketplace. Bio. I mean, they they encouraged everybody to go over there and start up a business, and yeah. then they stalled all of their designs and plans and research, and then they build it cheaper. Yep. And then they undo those. They don't care yeah. about America. And then they run people out of business. That's like corporate corporate war. Exactly. Exactly. And then their IT, their all their technology is always trying to. And we're not the only ones. Hack They've us. gone after yeah. like um hacked into India's power grid and all kinds of stuff as far I as mean, that goes. Why worry about sending out soldiers and boats and planes when you can do all this other stuff? It's right. a lot easier. But now with the war games, and everything that's been the big news is like these, yeah, yeah um, you know, hypothetical war games that they're playing, and. Uh, you know, shows, I don't know, that America... But, like, like, the, the pandemic, pandemic, and then they were producing all the medicine and all the uh, the masks and, and PPE, yeah. you know, personal yeah. protection yeah. equipment. I mean, jeez Can Louise. you not see the writing on the wall yeah. for this one? Yeah, I mean, how bad, how bad could it have been and how bad could it get yeah. if they control so much of the supply chain and then they just want to say, oh, turn that spigot off. It's over. Right. And then we've just been printing money like crazy. Um, so we're going to see inflation. And we're seeing yeah, that worldwide, though, speed. anyway, of like critical resource materials. Not to mention food. Yep. So. And then there, so their mission is to undermine the dollar anyway, which is seems like they're doing a fine job of, and and will be coming down our pipeline. So really, everything is cheery. Mm-hmm. That, that's why I say, got to shore up at home, make sure yep. we have our resources where we have a food supply of some type at your own place. Yep. Um, Absolutely. Because we just don't know. And then medically, um, even uh, I was talking with my dad this week, and he's a believer in the system, right? He believes in the medical system. He believes that these people all have our best interests in mind. He's getting his vaccination. He's doing, you oh. know, he's he's a, a believer. Uh-huh. And he told me this week, you know, um, a lot of his friends are ill, are ailing in some way or another. He's, you know, getting... I think he's turning 70 soon, maybe next year. Uh And so, you know, it's at that time of your life when you watch a lot of friends die and stuff. And he's like, um, you know, all this medication that they give people (laughs) for high blood pressure and for cholesterol specifically, it does things to your mind. Uh And once you're down that path, then they just start feeding you all these other medications to try and fix what's going on there. So, like, they just get you into this huge cycle of endless medication where your mind is just blown and and it's over. And I'm like, I know, Dad, that's what I've been trying to say. Like, there's a place for Western medicine for sure. We've Absolutely. done some incredible things. Yep. yep. And I want to believe that that doctors like 90% of people in the medical profession wouldn't be there if they did not care about people. Cause you can't deal with people day in day out like that. If you don't care. Um, but the, the system that was set up was set up to fuel a pharmaceutical corporate monster. And that's all that people are being taught in school now and then that's all they understand and know how to treat stuff with. And so yep. that's their go-to. Whereas, and that, I mean, these big corporate hospitals and insurance and everything, you have to do it this way or you can't work here. Right. Exactly. And the insurances are mandating what the doctors have to do. Yeah, and that's the, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, and the government funding, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then none of that is right. Um, I mean, a lot of control gets taken out of the doctor's hands. Right. And so being able to um, properly perform medication and 
so when I, because I had my bat, bat, my own bout with like a long term sickness, and that's when I realized I was just like, no, <laughs> no, there has to be other ways. And then meeting Nicole Pellian and just yeah. knowing that um, there are different ways to handle things. And it's just a matter of researching it, learning it, and applying it in your life. And it takes some major life changes sometimes. Um, it's not easy. And then also Chief Master, he, stage, he um, healed, self-healed from stage four lymphatic cancer. Jeez. Good yeah. on him. Right? All He's the one you have that crazy drink, drink or something, don't you? What oh, yeah, he ch- does. He does have one that, yeah, that he, oh, I can't even remember the name right now. I'm, yeah. I suck mean, with names. Yeah. But um, he did it. He, uh, there's, there's more to it than what I know, but it was basically he turned himself into a fully alkaline system, mm-hmm. uh, removed all sugars, all, you know, anything that was, um, that would help cancer grow. He basically starved the cancer in his body and got it to go away. That's good stuff. It is, right? So there's definitely alternatives um, out there that, you know, we, we have to keep thinking, keep, keep analyzing and learning what is good to have planted in your yard for if you don't have access to that medical supply chain. I mean, because that's a huge fear of mine is that supply chain would go down. And yeah. so many people are, are dependent upon these medications now. So I was like, okay, we got to just keep thinking through that stuff. Yep. So I want to do, um, want to go into some of the earth changes, do our earth update or, and save the cybersecurity stuff for next week. Or do you want yeah. to go into some of the resources? Yeah, let's do your, let's do your weather report. Okay. So this live from outer space, live Sarah. From outer space. So, um, suspicious observers, Dutch sense, um, mm-hmm. Mavstar reloaded, um, these are a lot of the sites that I follow on a weekly basis to get my information on what's going on because y- if you don't look, you're not going to be told what's going on with our planet. Um, it's a very dynamic system. And the more that I learn about the magnetic field weakening, they did this experiment with uh, rats over in Russia on the rats to figure out, you know, what would be the effects of spatial radiation <coughs> on these animals if we lost our magnetic shielding right Uh basically what would humans how would humans react if we so for the first week the rats were absolutely unable to perform the cognitive abilities that they were trained to do and their pain like their sense of feeling pain was like super heightened beyond like crazy super heightened and so um, week two, it somewhat subsided, like they could do a little bit better at their cognitive skills, but way below performance, normal performance rating, like severely underperforming. <laughs> so that's kind of, um, that is definitely a concern because we're basically, our system works by us being able to perform cognitive skills, right? So we're just talking about the supply chains, all the things that depend on human beings to do their job, right? Also, um, heart attack, like massive heart attacks from getting hit with the spatial radiation. Mm. So, though, you know, very concerning things. And then the emotional impact that it has on humans. I mean, like, if you can't see what's happening with human beings right now, there could be something kind of off. Like, if you look at a big picture, um, there could actually be, we're very influenced by this stuff. So, I mean, it could be a cause why everybody seems a little loopy lately, you know? So we're, we're just looking at what it does, uh, looking at those effects, and those are just evidence things that they've found. And the, the, the cardiac arrest is obviously pretty concerning. Yeah. yeah. 
It could be like your rapture, you know. I mean, if a, if we got slammed with big enough radiation, anybody with a weak heart is just probably not going to make it. Okay, so the effects of our um, the the eight that we had last week, but down by New Zealand, it's still kind of rippling around the Earth. Um, lots of volcanic eruptions eruptions happening. Um, Long Valley Caldera was showing lots of shaking, lots of uh, tremors and stuff hitting in northwestern United States. That's all around volcanoes. Because that whole coastline is actually volcanoes. Um, so that's all kind of, uh, you know, definitely, definitely worrisome. And then we had one of our jet streams actually climb up onto the Arctic this week. So usually they go around the Arctic, right? It went up and over. So that was, uh, that's, that's crazy. That's something that doesn't, you, don't, you just don't see this stuff. It's really, really interesting if you're into it and you've been following it. Um, but that, so with the, if you look at like what jet streams used to look at like, and you look at them, what they currently are, they're like all broken. Um, they're shortened and they're broken, like just feeding into each other kind of crazily. So this is going to affect our planet big time. The Pacific's really warm right now. Um, so they're expecting a lot of tornadoes this year. There was twin tornadoes in the panhandle yesterday, uh, which was, I mean, you just don't see them like twin tornadoes out there together. So if any... You know, I haven't heard if anybody was in harm's way or not because um, I just watch it from more of a scientific point of view. I believe it missed the town, which, you know, thank God nobody was hurt kind of thing. But all that will makes affect me. Uh, makes, makes me think of the uh, the movie Twister, Twister with, the, with the cows flying around. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be a really bad tornado year. So we're just holding on. But this storm that came through today was supposed to be really bad, followed up by another doozy right behind it. The, up north of us is getting hit a lot worse, mm -hmm. like Memphis South, and then uh, might be headed your way there, so watch out. But um, for us personally, it wasn't as bad as what was forecasted. So hopefully it, it, it's the same way across the, the central United States because that, that was supposed to be a doozy, and then there's another one right behind it that's coming in. Um, so <laughs> on top of that, we have some meteors that are coming in close, but we're using them mostly for research because when this meteor comes back in in eight years, it's supposed to be even closer, and they want, they're looking for ways that they can deflect these things, right? So we're trying to develop technology that we can deflect these big meteors away from the Earth, which would be great. Um, because <laughs> that's another, another doozy. Lots of volcanoes that haven't been on our list of erupting volcanoes in like 3,000 years, 2,500, 3,000 years. We've got them erupting right now. Um, Africa is seeing a lot of shaking in West Africa where that, that chunk is getting ready to break off of that continent pretty much. Um, Europe's been having a lot of activity still. And then eyes are still on Iceland because there's a big, huge, um, volcano that would be, you know, that is looking like it's going to erupt up there. And, uh, that one dis like last time we had just a smaller eruption in Iceland it mm -hmm. disrupted it uh, disrupted air, air travel to air Europe. Traffic, yeah. Yeah. So that's why they keep an eye pretty sharp on that. Um, and then the West Coast is still in like a warning period because like the earthquakes have been coming all the way up to it and then just like stopping. <laughs> um, so it's good, right? Because See, not nobody wants to, to go to California. California. Yeah, I know. I, well, it really makes me worried for it. You know, because I, I saw a lot of people there I love. Um, but they've been pretty much kind of like just stopping there, which is mm -hmm. fearful because it means that it's in a lock, right? It's in a lock position. And, and so when, when it goes, it, yeah, that it could be bigger. Than, yeah. That was And then with all the um, tremors and stuff that have been happening around the volcanoes, you know, that's just, we, if there was a big 
earthquake, then would it make the volcanoes go? Then we're looking at some serious um, issues. Okay, so the sun has been pretty chill um, from suspicious observers. We've had like some small little coronas coming around. Um, we hit uh, one just came through this weekend, just a little bit of uptick. So um, the sun, it's good on the hand that it's not ramping up, but it's uh -huh. bad because um, if you've li been listening to Christian at the Ice Age Farmer, you know that's been affecting our growing seasons pretty bad that our sun isn't upticking its activity. But with our magnetic shielding so low, we kind of don't want it to. So, uh, you know, we're riding that line. Yep. The spin of the Earth is still increasing, like, exponentially. And now, um, uh, suspicious observers, he's been checking it weekly now instead of monthly because uh, they just... It just keeps going faster and faster and faster. So it doesn't really do it justice to look at it monthly. He's now looking at it weekly, and it's still increasing this year. I think we're up to um, like 193 milliseconds faster or something. Like I say, you'll never see that. You'll never see that effect, but you can bet that our planet will. So um, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. The pole is still moving at the current rate. So our pole does this wobble, right? And it's usually pretty controlled where it's supposed to be. It, it wanders around and it comes back to the general area. So that's a strong uh, magnetic pole that keeps it in that area. They say once it goes to 40 degrees, once it wanders off to 40 degrees, then that's going to weaken. Then it could move quicker on the flip-flop, right? And so on the current schedule that we're on right now, that flip-flop will happen August of 2023 will be at the 40-degree mark where it could potentially, like, increase its flip a lot quicker. So uh, that's before we can get somebody else into that presidency office. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, a good thing, though, on that same... Spin, <laughs> spin of the earth. No pun intended. They're saying that 2021 is going to be one of the shortest years in decades because of the spin. Right, because it's so. Uh, up. Hey, you know, that's, yeah, that's a, true. A little less time with Uncle Joe. That's good. true. All right, all right. See, I'm like, trying to stay positive. Positive on the negative. I like there that. You go. I like that. There's my much. spin on this. <laughs> I like that a lot. Um, yeah, so it's just going to be interesting. We're just going to, I'm just keeping my eyes on the earthquake activity because uh, to yeah. see an eight, um, Chile is starting to light up. Uh, down by Guatemala, that area, like all of their volcanoes are erupting. That area is um, uh, just lighting up with activity. So just from like a scientific standpoint, very interesting stuff. But if you're in those areas, you definitely need to um, be prepared you should have an earthquake plan anyway because we're all vulnerable to this. Um, whether you think you are or not, you are. Also, tornado plans for those of yep. you in the central United States coming up through these next um, couple months. We're just going to keep our eyes open and, uh, you know, at that activity. So I can't wait to kind of see what happened today. And... Uh, you know, hopefully everything was okay. When I heard Memphis um, area was getting it, you know, we got friends up there too. So um, people are part of the survival communities up there. And so same prayers for everybody. Hopefully it's safe. So, oh, we got Denise popped into our, our chat yeah, room. She yeah, What's she up? made it. We're missing you there. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, missed some laughs this show. show. Yeah, exactly. We needed the laughs, too, because we were going through so much crazy stuff. Oh, man. So hopefully you were okay, Denise, with the with the tornadoes that came through yesterday. Um, I don't know if you're up in that area or not, but I know we did okay. And, like, the wind wasn't even bad here or anything. So I was like, okay, cool. Wish we would have got our uh, delivery our delivery of garden to for building our gardens got moved off till Tuesday. If we would have got it today, it was actually better weather than what we thought it was going to be today. We could actually got some some work done there. 
Wow. What about dirt for you in your containers? Are you switching out this year to all new dirt, or are you just um, putting in more nutrients? What are you doing there? Uh, a little more nutrients. Uh, we're going to uh, till in a little dirt with it and some nutrients. Yeah. Yeah. Because we didn't fill them up all the way last time, so I'm going to just add a little of this, a little of that. I know you know somebody who has rabbits. You should get some of those rabbit pellets for it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You get, like, you. You get like a bag of rel- uh, rabbit pellets and mix that in. It's really good. I yeah. hear you. Yep. Okay. Make some rabbit tea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good for the soil. Um, and they actually help aerate, too, if you put the actual pellets in. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So your like containers, they don't get um, compacted too much. The soil in it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, this, this week kind of turned into a crappy, crappy show, show, Sarah. <laughs> ah, it's the crap. best thing you can do the <laughs> best i mean poop is where it's at for grown food well i saw a funny meme the other day it was like hey, did you ever think that plants are just harvesting us <laughs> right yeah they you know they they new they give us the nutrients to grow we die we give them the nutrients kind of thing <laughs> yeah so we're just uh, plant oh, food. Oh yeah, we're we're just big bundles of plant food. No, but everything went really well. And then, so next week, let's do the ta- let's do the discussion on some Go techie. techie. Yeah, the techie discussion because mm-hmm. I know you're always enlightening me, so help enlighten the audience on. Well, you get, you get freaked, freaked out about, about space, space weather. I get, get freaked, freaked out about. about Techie. Oh, man, people. I don't blame you. Yeah. It's just track, track, track. Like I said, the more they track you, it's just slavery. Yeah. They're, they're like, like drug, drug dealers. dealers. Yeah. They tell you they're making your life better. It's true. And they're just trying oh. to control you. That's so scary. And then when I saw that um, interview uh, with that lady, God, I wish I could think of what her name was. But um, and she was talking about, you know, how human trafficking is like the most lucrative business. And the reason why it puttered out is because they couldn't track their assets. I was just like, oh, my God, it makes complete sense. And they could absolutely do that now. So. Uh huh. Man, we got to just stay to our core core values, core values. Everybody remember (laughs) core values. Um, but that's one of the best things that I'm doing with Virgis's character right now is that blurred line, right? Yeah. Of you have good intentions. You think you're doing the right thing. Um, but. He was out there directing traffic, traffic, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. (laughs) It was the first episode where TJ ran. Baby face. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody's going to be like, when do these characters interact? So you'll just yeah, have to it's, stay tuned. It's fun seeing it. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 On their own storylines. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's, what, like I say, that's one of the biggest plays that I'm really doing with Virgis's character is, um, you know, he, you, you, it, it gets really convoluted on what's <laughs> right, what's the correct thing to do for people, you know. And I'm sure that people, uh, that's probably where the God complex comes from and all that is, oh, I'm, I'm doing what's best for our world and our nation, you know, and then the impact on the individual is kind of lost in that um, process, I guess, you know? I think that's what corporations, where they're at right now. Well, yeah, I mean, what's their driving force? Is it their... Is it investors green? or is their board is the their, their yeah. employees is it the world yeah the people they're servicing yep uh-huh. that's why it's it's got to be tough you know 
And even when you think you're doing the right thing, it might be hurting others. And so you just don't know. Uh-huh. That's why I say kind of overwhelming. Uh-huh. A little bit. So here you got, got to get your food supply. You know, head on over to preparewithchangingearth.com and uh, get your food supply stocked up. Make sure you're stocked up because uh, we just talked about a myriad of things coming down the pipeline. And honestly, we didn't even scratch the surface of the list that I sent you. No, no we, we did, did not. not. So Jim was I had like, to pull back on the range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, pick like two and we're going to go for that, you know? <laughs> it's like it's like the little kid that comes running out of their, the house with like a box full of toys. It's like, no, you can only bring three toys on vacation. <laughs> right. Sarah's like, I got this whole basket full of stuff for us to talk about. <laughs> Jen's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep it going all day. Oh, Denise asking, how do I pick the names for my characters? Um, <laughs> well, some I actually know in real life, uh, but I can, I'll change their names, like mix a first name with the last name. Um, I, I do use some of the generators, like I did at one time, use some of the name generators online. Um, I work for an insurance company, so <laughs> <laughs> I can just kind of like type a letter in and see what comes up. Uh, and I'll always mix them up. I'll always mix them up because, you know, you don't want to use anybody's real name. And then um, uh, very rarely do I use like somebody's full name in there, although there are a couple that are like people I know reals na or that are real names used as different characters. And then I'll ask my boys, too. Like, I always just like, hey, Christian, what's a good girl's name, you know? And yeah. then he'll, he'll pop a name for me. So it's, that is one of the most challenging parts. And then keeping them all straight. Um, and then not using the same name over and over. Like when I was first writing in uh, Day After Disaster, in the, in the story we're on right now, uh, there's a lot of Jimmy, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And... Because you just think it. Or Steve. I had like two Steves as well. And that gets challenging with the audio show. Um, to have to um, use the same name. So I, I found that's kind of a problem. But I didn't want to change it off my book. Uh -huh. So, Right? You have to use last name or first name for one of them. Yeah. And like uh, Jimmy D. I do Jimmy D. You know. Yeah. And then the kids. Little Jim. So, yeah. 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 But I was like, dude, what was I thinking? I pick a different name. Like, <laughs> uh, I wrote that book a long time ago now. You know, that was published in 2014. And um, I, I wrote that book over a series of eight years just as a hobby project. So um, never intended on publishing it. You know, it was done, and Mom was like, you got to finish book. You got to publish it. Oh, what? <laughs> so, yeah, away the adventure began. So thank you, Lord, for setting my path the way it went because I got to uh, speak to this awesome audience and meet you, Chen, and so many other incredible people. Yeah, tons, tons of people, people, right? Right, yeah. My life has just been so enriched by, uh, I just was thinking one day, well, here's the story. Um about a girl named Erica. Have a love. <laughs> yeah, right. Brady Bunch song is running through my head. I know, right me too. <laughs> and she got shaken up very, very hard. <laughs> oh, I better not. There say goes that. our I'm audience. Not, I, mean, I might be crossing copyrights or something. You know? <laughs> Trust so. me, we'll never link to this. <laughs> One of my favorite soundtrack. memes for California was. Uh, God puts the scared people in. He puts the scared people <laughs> out. God puts the scared people in, and he shakes them all about. That's funny. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't say that, though. That's funny. There's a lot of good people there. Oh, uh, there's the attorneys calling. Yeah, I know. Bling, <laughs> bling. <laughs> it's over. It's over. All right, well, we better get out of here. Um, it was good having <laughs> you back with us, Denise. Got to catch up next time. And then all y'all out there, come join us on Twitch. It's always a blast. And uh, 
It gives me lots to talk about, talk with you guys. Obviously, I have plenty to talk about. Chin got a whole list of it today. <laughs> 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 There's one thing I can do. It's talk. talk. Yep. Good thing I get educated on a lot of a lot of topics first. Not only can you write, you can talk. I can talk. It's one of my skills. I don't even need a microphone normally, so you can hear me across like miles. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you for being with us, everybody. Chin, always a pleasure. You bet. Until next time, remember, dream, survive, thrive. Thank you for joining Sarah and Chen for this episode of the Changing Earth Podcast at www.offersarahfhathaway.com. If you love the Changing Earth series and podcast, become a supporter while you're there.